Hi, mamas. Welcome to what is the first week of what we are calling Narcissist Month. I'm here to teach you all about narcissism, narcissistic traits, and help you identify either traits in yourself or in loved ones or those that you interact with so you can be more informed and more prepared in your interactions. So, okay, first I want to just break down that about 10 to 15% of the population has um, displays of narcissism. And so this is different than narcissistic personality disorder, which is a difficult to pinpoint personality disorder that is diagnosable, that is in our therapy guidebook for diagnoses, the DSM. And really we only know about two to 3% of the population with this personality disorder, mainly because narcissists don't seek treatment. <laughs> so we do know though that about 10 to 15%, up to 20% of people do show narcissistic traits and so if you're thinking about you're in a room of 20 people, expect one to two of those people in that room of the 20 to show signs of narcissism. So um, first we're going to identify the four types of uh, narcissistic type of behavior. And these are ones that maybe you can see in those that you interact with. And I wanna just put out a word of caution that if you are listening to this and you're like, gosh, like. I kind of identify with some of this. First of all, it's okay. The first step in treating narcissistic traits, narcissism is self-awareness. So applaud yourself for being self-aware. And I know the narcissist in you will be very happy to give yourself a pat on the back. Um, but then that's time to go and talk to someone and really get to the root of the issues. So we're going to first talk about the four types of narcissism and then we're going to get into the how. Like, how does this even happen? Why does someone become this way? Okay, so the grandiose narcissist is someone who is very much that like definition that I think we all assume when we think of narcissism. So this is someone with attention seeking behavior, validation seeking behavior. They're big and pompous and arrogant and they don't listen and they're super egotistical and they're entitled and they have no empathy and don't care if they are um, stepping on other people's toes or who they hurt to get the attention and validation that they need. There's malignant type of narcissism, which is actually all of the above, all of the, the grandiosity type of traits, in addition to they're mean and they do bad things and they don't care again about kind of the wreckage in the path. Uh, these are our uh, cheaters, these are our stealers, um, they have minimal amount of remorse, they do care if they hurt loved ones or family, um, but really no one else. And that's really the difference between a malignant narcissist and someone who is a psychopath, because psychopath just doesn't care about anyone that they hurt. Uh, but again, this is someone, again, like, um, a Bernie Madoff, right? Someone who's in a Ponzi scheme and ripping off people and taking their money and they really don't care and they feel entitled to that. And they are, you know, wanting recognition and want people to believe in them and be in good favor. And again, they don't care about the kind of collateral damage. Okay, this next type of narcissistic trait is one that I think almost every single human has had an experience with. Either they recognize it in themselves or someone close to them, someone they've worked with is very much this type of person. And this is your covert narcissist. So covert meaning more secretive. And the really key proponent of this person is that they feel very put upon by the, by the world. They blame the world for everything. This is kind of your classic victim mentality. They're still grandiose in that they still think that they are um, entitled and they're arrogant and they believe that basically they're so great and the reason why they don't have the things that they want in their life is because of how other people have treated them or what other people have taken away from them. So great example. Um, yeah, I'm a really great employee, but all those companies just didn't see my value. That is why I left those companies. When in reality, they really got fired, right? Or um, in relationships, someone that's like continually being broken up with and, 
or losing friends. And it's, well, you know, I'm a really, really good friend or I'm a really, really great partner. And it's just that those other people don't see how good I am at being that. You know, they don't see my worth. They don't see my value. They don't see, you know, the potential that I have and all the things that I can do for them. There's a lot of passive aggression with these type of people. Um, a lot of woe is me and self-pity. Why doesn't everyone else see how great I am? They're very sensitive to criticism. Um, they write people off and throw tantrums if they've been criticized. And then they will like very much like, that's it, it's on, it, you know, this is your fault. I'm sorry you feel that way. I don't ever have to interact with you again. By the way, I'm not gonna go to your birthday party because obviously I'm a horrible friend to you and you don't see how much I've actually been trying, right? So um, you're gonna see this type of person a lot in the workplace with friendships. Um, they still are arrogant. They don't take a lot of accountability or self-ownership. They, again, blame the world. So you, I think a lot of times people think that this person's just someone who's depressed, right? Kind of that Debbie Downer. And in reality, it looks like depression because it's very much like, oh, you know, nothing ever works out for me. My life is so sad. Um, I don't know what I can do to ever make things better. Like there's nothing I can do. The world just doesn't like me. But the difference between depression and covert narcissism is that depression is treatable. Covert narcissism is a true internal belief and way of interacting in the world. And a lot of times we get in relationships with a covert narcissist because we feel bad for them. And we feel like, oh, they just have really low self-esteem. Like, gosh, a lot of these bad things happen to them. I feel really sorry for them. I wanna be that person that teaches them how to take accountability and lift themselves up and feel good about themselves and like, I can do that because I believe in their potential. I see that they can be good. Well, first of all, you might be having been gaslighted and so whether that is true or not is questionable. But then also it's not taking into account the fact that it's actually necess not necessarily about their low self-esteem because someone who just has low self-esteem, who is not a narcissist, just low self-esteem, they'll take accountability. Right? They'll take ownership, they'll do things, they'll try things, and then they'll take that feedback and they'll shift and they'll try again. But someone who is a covert narcissist like truly does not take accountability for themselves. And they see the repeat of patterns just simply being the world against them versus anything that's inherently wrong with them. Uh, they also, I love this example because I see this all the time, they can't celebrate other people's successes. So if something good happens to someone else, it's like, oh, wow, like, good for you for getting that great promotion. It must have just been a lot easier for you. Or, you know, your father must have paved the path for you. Or, gosh, you know, it must just be a change of time and that, you know, people like you are getting promoted more easier than, you know, when I was up for a promotion, right? I'm talking about this as if this is like a, a parent, but this can happen amongst peers, of course, too. Okay, so that's the third type of narcissist personality uh, traits. So then the last type of narcissist is a communal narcissist. And this one, oh man, I love this one because I think we all can like very clearly see, I think you can see someone very clearly in all of these, uh, but the communal narcissist is someone who is all about doing good, like loves to do good for others, all about like giving back and being so great out in the world and changing the world, but they have to be seen doing it. So they are taking selfies of them, you know, on a mission trip in Haiti. They are constantly talking about how many charities they give to and how many fundraisers they throw. Um, they're always kind of ready for the photo shoot for someone to congratulate them for like, wow, you're doing such good work in the world. They want their name on things. They want to be celebrated for all of the giving that they're doing. I'm so great. I can save the world, right? They still have that grandiosity. And then the key difference is that um, from someone who's just like, I don't know, out of touch, but this person will not actually connect to the people, things, animals that they're actually helping, right? So an example would be they are in Haiti and they're holding a child and they're there for the photo shoot. And then as soon as the child sneezes, it's like, ugh, get this thing off of me right? 
I'm sure you see some of those people. They also feel very much superior to the things, the people, the places that they are helping. Um, they feel definitely like a martyr, like they're rescuing, like total savior mentality and therefore belittling the efficacy or the humanity in the person, place, thing, animal that they are trying to help. Um, again, they feel very much better than them, than everyone else that they're trying to help. Okay, so those are the four types of narcissistic personality traits. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about like how, why is this such a big deal? Why are so many people talking about it? Why are you guys also interested in this topic? Why does it feel like there's so many people displaying narcissistic personality traits? So we live in a capitalistic, materialistic society. Therefore, it is a perfect breeding ground because people are looking for ways to show their worth and to be better than other people. There's so much comparison. Social media has led to so much social comparison and there's actually rewards for putting yourself first and not thinking about other people and not caring who you step on to like get your way and make your point and achieve, achieve in this world. Success very much is defined in our world as like, what do you have to do to get there? And so it's a perfect breeding ground for narcissists who are just like, I'm great and I'm gonna keep doing what I wanna do and I don't care who gets in the way. Um, yeah, so <laughs> the selfie generation also, when we think about our children and what type of environment they're growing up in, this social comparison, this like, you are not worthy unless you're being validated and recognized is again, a really good breeding ground for it. Additionally, what we're modeling in the home. So I remember a study 10 years ago said, we are raising narcissist types of children because everyone's looking down at their phone and these kids are wanting for attention so badly and they're not getting it because everyone's paying attention to what's on their phone. At the time, I didn't have children, so I was like, oh, like, that's funny. And I, you know, pointed my finger at everyone else being like, yeah, you're a parent, you should get off your phone. Well, now I'm seeing it, right? With two kids of my own, I see it, right? We see how they want attention, they want validation, they want us to play with them. We, they just want us to be present with them. And when we're immersed in something else, we're distracted, we're not giving it to them. And then they are gonna be encouraged because societally by social comparison and how great are you and you're so special, perfect breeding ground, again, for narcissism. Narcissism at the root is an issue of emptiness and insecurity and immense vulnerability. A lot of times, not only can this just be groomed from role modeling and the behaviors of their parents and the ones that they're around, but then also it can be trauma-induced in that if someone parents are struggling with their own mental health and they don't have the capacity to give their children love, empathy, connection, genuine attention, then the kid will feel insecure, right? It's just plain simple attachment. It'll make them anxious, it'll make them act out to try and get that attention otherwise. And then once that behavior is validated, like, oh, you're getting attention no matter what you're behaving like, then that's gonna continue to build and build and build trauma that happens is also something that produces the ability for someone to say, well, I don't want to have to deal with the pain. I don't have to deal with the, the hurt and the suffering and the, the, that feeling again of emptiness of like feeling unloved, right? Especially if this person's parents were alcoholics or they were abusive, that's painful as for someone to sit with like what that really feels like. And so they almost create their own inner circle of what they want their world to be like. And that is very much, could be a lot of times like the communal or the covert narcissist of things just happen to me. It feels too much to actually be held accountable and deal with things. So I'm just gonna kind of shut down and revert and think the opposite of, you know, the world is against me. I can never get a leg up in this world. 
So there are a lot of different ways in which someone can develop narcissistic traits. Um, the key here, though, really, truly, is that for someone to change, the only way for someone with these behaviors to change is to look within, to sit in the hurt, the emptiness, the pain, the insecurity, the root of it, and be self-aware enough to say, okay, this is where I came from. And I recognize now how many people I've hurt because of my narcissism. And it's because of you know a myriad of circumstances, but I'm now taking accountability. And again, not a lot of people who show narcissism get help because again, what you need more than anything else is really true self-awareness. So that's why it's difficult for someone to change. It's why it's difficult for you to try and change that person, for them to finally wake up and see everything that they've been doing and take accountability. It just doesn't work that way. It's just not that simple. Um, they really have to dig deep. Some other issues that have contributed to a lot of narcissism is that our humanity is having a hard time valuing empathy right now, um, specifically in men and boys and, and how we genderize. And so just being really cognizant of teaching kindness in your home and like really, really truly that like deep empathy of how do you, you know, how does that make someone feel and putting yourself in someone else's shoes, uh, really teaching that deep care for other beings, right? Not just humans, but all beings. Um, yeah, so I hope <laughs> there's a lot more that we can talk about this and we will. So each week we're going to build on, we're going to keep talking about this uh, so that you guys can feel like you have the tools to either look within or help to understand those in your life uh, with a little bit more clarity. And hopefully also recognize that you are not the one that can fix them. Only they themselves can rise out, out of this narcissism. So um, I don't see, oh, one question. Can people become a narcissist after trauma or no? Uh, so it depends how early on. So a lot of times like the root of our personality is developed when we're younger, like six, seven, eight years old. Um, that's just when we're developing our belief system and how we perceive the world. So if trauma is happening later in life, there was already some narcissism there in order for them to really, truly shut down and say, like, okay, that's it. The world's against me. Like, they have to have a lot of proof um, to tr continue to, I guess, um, build on that belief system. Right, so they already maybe had a victim type of mentality, but trauma early on for sure, trauma in childhood for sure. Um, but if like, let's say something traumatic happened when they were 24, I, I don't know if that's gonna be as clear. So any other questions that you have, please drop them in the comments. Um, again, we're gonna do a whole month on narcissism. So also DM me, Carrie Biscolonis at Reset or ask Detroit Moms to send me information on what else you want to know about narcissism, but we're going to be talking about it all month. So uh, take care out there.